show for all the people watching around the world. Um, episode two of the podcast show. You may have missed or maybe you were one of the 4,000 viewers of uh, last week's first debut episode of the podcast show live from the Tramway Hotel. Week two, here we are at the Commercial Club Hotel in downtown Fitzroy, Melbourne. And what a beautiful pub it is. Now just mentioned that they're in the Johnny Cash room, if you don't mind. So um, the man in black is watching over us this evening and we're very happy to be in his presence, but even better to be in your presence. Jason Evans on my left, Madison Thomas, Maddie on my right. How hey, are yeah. you? How are we? How are we? I'm so good. I'm so excited. I'm a little warm. It is so <laughs> nice and gorgeous in Melbourne tonight. We wish that we could be outside, unfortunately, lighting, etc. <laughs> The lights are just beaming no, on Divas, us. Divas, so Divas, 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 Divas wouldn't walk outside. Can I just jump in? Yes, As please well as do. being here at the Commercial Club, can we just acknowledge uh, the traditional landowners, the Wurundjeri people, the Kulin Nation, and thank Elders past, present and future. Always was, always will be Aboriginal land. So, um, Jason, we are also in this very spot, the Commercial Club Hotel, where the seed of the idea of the podcast show was born. That's so true. Do tell. That's true. And if you're joining us for the first time, we're going to be delivering a half hour live show every week for the rest of our lives. You don't know about that yet, oh but my no. God, it keeps getting my extended lives. every episode. Was, oh. Because, uh, you know, uh, there's been developments in the media. There's Channel 9 might pick us up, but we'll get back to that later. But, uh, there was a wage war, equity war yeah. with the women and the men anyway. We episode, go on, go on. episode two of the Pubcast show was conceived uh, many, many, many weeks ago when the great Robert Murphy, the captain of the, the uh, Western Bulldogs, announced his retirement. And in his press conference, in his press conference, in front of the AFL and all the dignitaries, he thanked Paul Kelly, Tim Rogers, the Espy Rock Dogs. And I thought, that's incredible. So the Rock Dogs had to respond. You know, the Rock Dogs were Australia's favourite community musical team. And so we did a, so Nick Cooper, the then co-captain, myself, uh, did just a little response here at this very bar and uh, it got like a thousand people and I kind of went, wow, that's a great idea. And then I went to a pub because as you, we all know, great ideas always happen in a pub. Exactly. And I'm having a beer there by myself ideas. one day and I thought, we could do this every week. We could. And, and we, we are, are doing it every and week. And we are. And I remember watching that little live thing that popped up, you know, you and Coops in my feet. You were saying, all oh, the lighting's bad, can't going, hear what? you. What are they Why aren't you wearing makeup? What's going on? I can't. Ah, oh, they're talking about, oh, this is Bob Murphy's favourite pub. Mm. And he, they're giving a bit, of, a bit of a nod to Bob for his um, fine career in football. Here I am talking about football. Um, I am a fan, but it's just, I it's can't time. really speak. We'll talk a little bit about football a bit later. <laughs> um, yes, we'll talk more about football a bit later. But I just thought, oh my God, I want to do that. And then... A little while later, you sent me a message and said, do you want to do that? Well, I actually, it's, sorry, sorry, oh. forget to Maddie, I didn't send you a message because I actually had this wish list of all these great, wonderful people. And oh, when you think of an right. idea, you want to get a triple R people and all these other people. Yeah. And they were all busy, so I called you. So I'm, I'm right. really. Oh, so you're, oh, that's a laugh. Can we get that laugh a little bit bigger, please? I got a gag. I got a gag. Oh my God. We can't <laughs> afford laugh tracks with Jason yet, but you know, please donate to our Patreon and he'll make, his, really he'll make his jokes sound better. He tries. <laughs> and he's trying. So that's why we're here. But Maddie. And Maddie, us. and then and then and then we found Maddie, and well, you I, found I Maddie. I found Maddie. Maddie. Gee, you really are a bit of a talent scout. Well, I actually swipe right properly because I was going through because we, you know, I asked somebody else and they said no, and then yeah. I said to Maddie, I said, "Here it is. Do you want to be a part of it?" Yeah. The awkward part was I had swipe left, but um, <laughs> there's Excellent. just no telling somebody. I don't know what that means anyway. I've, got, and, uh, I've been fed that gag before, so here we are, and, and we're it's very been fun. and so I, yeah. Maddie and I have become firm, fast friends. Besties. We have. Besties. It's really, yeah, yes. really great. So you we're can feel this, there's a wedge between us. <laughs> oh, come on, stop it. We're all very friendly. So I didn't get the lunch invite on Friday. We Thank all coordinate you. our lipstick. Yeah. And um, we didn't get the memo, obviously. <laughs> oh, hey, I was just going to, you know, given we're coming beaming from a pub each week, 
Last week I was asked about my early pub experience, but what was um, one of your early pub experiences? I think you had family watching, so I don't know yeah. how, how that will go. I have to start this with, sorry mum, but <laughs> my earliest pub memories would be we go to the pub with mum and dad and the family and then you know as the night sort of went on and you got a bit tired and you know you couldn't be bribed with any more sand boys. Uh, you'd get the two stools pushed together and a couple of coats and you'd just have a snooze. But Aww. my family grew up in pubs. My grandma's sister ran the Cherry Tree Hotel in oh, Richmond yes. for years. Yeah. And the Empress of India oh, really? as well. Just so, around here. Yeah. Up it's another there, gentrified pub. <coughs> yep. Well, you know, you can't help progress. You can stop development. <laughs> well, you can stop. That is true. Um, unethical development. So yeah, we're we're getting all, we've already. all grown up in pubs. Oh God, let's not get political. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of stuff going there on. There has been a lot of stuff going on. We'll talk a bit about, you know, what's been going on for, not necessarily us personally, because that could take longer than half an hour, but yeah. more about what's been going on in the world. Because this, this show is basically three people and yourselves, you know, you haven't been in a pub for a while, Get back and find a local pub, or if you're just somewhere, you could be in Florida right now, or or, or Somalia, or working, and you you know you're an expat Australian. Hello, Somalia, Greenland, hello Florida, Hawaii, Stay Florida, weird. hello Reservoir. But it's basically, if, if you're missing or you haven't been to a pub, we well, the podcast show is going to connect you and, and give you reasons why you should go to a pub, and it's okay to sit in a bar and listen to people like us just waffle on, yes. like our studio audience. Again, yeah. are you there, studio yeah. audience? Yeah. Yeah. Carby may have just, uh, thanks to Carby behind the camera, the man with the magic wand there, doing Ooh. all kinds of wonderful things with the wandy camera. Things. Wandy things. Wandy um, things. But apart, you know, we have to get someone with talent into these shows to make it all more worthwhile for us to be here, but also for you watching at home. And tonight we have the inimitable, inimitable, Inim Rob, inimitable. inimitable. Um, Rob you know Starsky is, um, is coming up. Are we introducing him now? Are you going to introduce Rob? I'm going to introduce because we've got a running sheet is down there. Time? That is says it time? Well, there's I been a spoiler. We, but, we, we've all seen but Rob. But quickly. <laughs> oh, hang on, hey, just Rob. stop. Rob. I'm sorry. No, no, hang on. Hang on. You've got a G and T in your hand, Maddie. What is I the, do have a G and T in my hand, which I try not to do midweek because it's usually, uh, it starts on a really high note and ends with a fist fight. But it is International G&T Day tomorrow, so oh, get down, cheers to you. enjoy the, G the last of the beautiful weather before it goes away just in time for the weekend. And uh, yeah, get a GT in you. Mm. Thank you very much. Hey, it's my job here at the Pubcar Show to introduce our first musical act. Last week, Kate Lucas from Coda Crime absolutely blew the ratings. We would have had about three listeners. But because Kate was just absolutely still a performer, uh, just up the ante, and then again, I had some other people booked in, and then I had to kind of class that as being so. It gives me great pleasure to uh, welcome to uh, episode two of the Pubcast Show a great friend of mine, a great Western Australian, lead singer of the Black Eyed Susans, an author, an ex barman of the Standard Hotel. We'll get back later. Rob, can you please join us? Rob Snarsky, please. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Trains and buses, trams and cars pass you by. Rain is falling heavy, heavier than sound. Everything is slow. Thing. The colors move in circles, colors move in circles, 
I think I started sneaking into bars to see music with my brother and, and uh, of course I used his driver's license to get in. I was probably about 16 and I guess that's where it all sort of began for me. I didn't sort of drink or anything, I was just interested in seeing some live music so that's, that's how it started. My folks weren't really into it, um, they didn't want to take kids to the pub, it wasn't their thing at all and, and mum has this memory of um, you know, walking into um, a pub in Perth, late sixties, and being told she wasn't allowed to be there. So it was still at that point in time when uh, you had separate rooms for, for the, the ladies. Wow. The ladies' lounge. Yeah, yeah. Brown gentle yeah. female yeah. ears, mm -hmm. lest there be profanity. I've just got a quick one before Robin. I'll hand it over to you, please. Uh, besides, as a musician, and most musicians that struggle, not saying you're struggling at all, but uh, at the time when you know. Black Lodge was going here and this and that. You poured beers for a few years at the Standard Hotel there, uh, Rob. Uh, some I of your memories there with the uh, Standard pouring beers? Well, the Standard, I think, was one of the first pubs um, in Melbourne to, to start having a bit of personality. Mm. And uh, you kind of walked into that place and it was like someone's lounge room. Yeah. And Steve Miller, Steve handsome Miller. Steve Miller, handsome was Steve Miller. running the, the place with a, a guy called Dave yeah. Walsh. And they used to have uh, country music on a, on a Tuesday and a Sunday yes. as well. And that, to me, I think that was the kind of start of alternative country music in, in Melbourne as well. So if they had the Paradise Benders play there in bands like A Cups Rose. And I think they still do to this day, even though they've changed hands. But um, oh look, it was, um, it was a meeting place. Every time uh, I sort of went there, I'd bump into people I knew and musicians I knew. Certainly it was a Friday night thing to do, if I didn't have a gig, I'd go there. And of course, staff fell sick um, at some point in time, and I offered my services, never having ported beer before, but uh, Steve let me have a go, and I ended up uh, near Wooden Brown Park. For a period of time, just before we took off to do um, some shows in the States with you, Jason. That's right, and I've, been, I've, I've never been so close to you before performing. I've, I was waiting for you to break the string so I could just... <laughs> <laughs> the road I'm going to action. Now. Do you remember Pocket. how to do that? Just hang on, just come on. <laughs> Rob, our show, of no course. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Rob, apart from, you know, playing music, you're also an author. Oh, the book. Oh, yeah. oh, the book. This, this, this is a, you know. All that doesn't really sit well with me. You're I a have, writer. That's, that that's a little bit better. Yeah. 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 Right. Um, that wasn't supposed to happen, and it was uh, quite unconventional how it came Did about. Um, I simply wrote something on Facebook, and it was a, about a band I really loved called The Reels. Yeah. And an artist friend of mine in Perth said, You've got to send this on to a publisher. It's fantastic. And, 
I wasn't so sure about it, but I kind of did it reluctantly, you know, and, and I guess for my ego as well to see what would happen. And luckily enough, they, they liked what they read and um, threw down the gauntlet and said, write some more and see what happens. So That is fantastic. That and here we have the book, You're Not Rob Snuts, Nasty Crumbs from the Cake, which I love the crumbs from the cake. Um, and there's a little gig you've got here. I'm just ignoring the fact that we have a new person sitting next to you. That seamless transition. Stand in, Jason. Can I go? Can I go now? He's our stunt, yeah. Jason. <laughs> I just want to plug um, Rob's. Um, uh, yes, you're performing. You're talking at a writers' festival in Geelong, coming up on the 18th of November at the Geelong Library, and um, he's going to be on a panel called "Songs That Strike a Chord" with Charles Jenkins and Neil Murray. So that'll be really great and a different sort of setting for people to get a bit of Rob Snarsky as well as um, more following that up with a solo gig later that night. So if you do want to know a little bit more about that, check out um, Rob's um, Facebook page and you'll find out about all the Christmas shows with Black Eyed Susans that are coming up at Christmas. And this really, and really well, I hope it's a album. Karen, I hope it's a Christmas because it'd be really shit out if it was like an Easter. Yeah, that was my joke. So, um, <laughs> thank you, yes, that's really great. Thanks very much, Rob. We're going to see you here a bit. Rob Snarsky, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. 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 Sorry, I, I went up before oh. acceptance because, you know, in the second segment, because we've actually officially launched in the segment, second segment, where we meet the public and the pub or someone's involved. So, it's yeah, been a great pleasure. So Maddie, so Karen, can I introduce you to Patrick, Hello, Pedro Patrick. Walsh, nice to meet you, who is Patrick. the uh, round of applause there for Patty Walsh. Publican, chef, cleaner, everything you do. You here. get to do it all. Yeah, absolutely. That's why you need the apron for all yeah, of the I, jobs. I, you I, the the apron's doing. actually kind of a furphy, really. I'm just trying to look like I work really hard. <laughs> if, I just, if I could just quickly jump <laughs> in, we play cricket together. Yes. Uh, we play cricket uh, domestically, but also internationally in Samoa. And, yeah. and as I was your captain in Samoa, you know, it's like captain, you've got to make dignitaries, you've got to do everything. So being a cricket club captain is very much similar to being a publican, isn't it? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, you know, the interesting thing about being in Samoa is they're, you know, they like the hierarchy and they want to meet the person who's in charge. Not so. the underlings. No, and they want, you know, they want their man to talk to your man and all that sort of stuff. So it's pretty interesting and pretty fun. And a little, uh, a little weary after 10 days drinking beer. Now, oh, sorry. No, please. I was going to say, I was lining up to get my delicious g and which is getting a little uh, melty at the moment, so I'll pop it down. In addition to all of the hats that you wear here, are you also illustrator? I saw a whole bunch of little pictures above the fridge in the bar. Look like a bit of Nick Cave. No, that's, uh, that, that, no, no, I leave the, 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 uh, the artistry to the people who uh, <laughs> are actually quite good at it. Um, Kate, who worked with us, uh, who a lot of people here would know, um, you know, among her many talents is a fine arts degree, and oh, so wow. most of that stuff is hers. And, and then lots of other people see yeah. that and add to it and all that sort of stuff. So it's kind of one of those things. If you know somebody sees it and then it becomes, you know, it, a thing. One of the things that I was, I guess, always a bit conscious of when Anthony and I started here, you know, in two thousand and six was. Uh, it didn't. It wasn't to be a Fitzroy pub in a box. Yeah. So all of the things on the walls have, you know, some kind of significance, whether it's that yes, or. I was you know. Know. Tell, tell a story about the king. The well, I've, my king. I, 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 I was I was searching for that uh, for an image of him, and I came across. Uh, he apparently came here in about eighty and did a press conference at Tullamarine and was, you know, surly and cross and all that sort of stuff. And, no, you know, some of the be, things that we, you be, know, um, and so I just thought it was a kind of a great image. I figure if he looked at me like that, he'd probably remember your piece and cues. Well, I believe he came here a bit earlier because my grandma, who's in the audience, I believe, <gasps> met Johnny Cash in what year? So she was pregnant with Nicole. 1965. That was a fabulous year. 1965, yeah. we believe. Yeah. So the connection is strong. Oh no, 1971. Oh. <laughs> she's that got amended? Whoa. <laughs> well, she's had five children. She's just <laughs> stopped the counting stuff. the years she's after a while. Stuff. She was a very busy woman. Can't tell one from the other. <laughs> Thank you um, very much for having us in your, in your lounge room. It's a pleasure to have the pubcasters. Um, and... What else is happening in the pub? 
So, uh, coming up, like this is a real. The grill's on. Yeah, the grill is on. The pizza uh, oven's happening. Yeah, it's all going. Um, I mean, this is a little local pub on a mm. corner, and that's how we treat it. There was a lot of different owners here in the period before we came in, and it's, you know, if the customers here have something in common, it's geography and yeah. not necessarily age group or style or whatever. So you make a good pub. That's it. That's, that's what we're trying to do, yeah. hopefully. What's your history with pubs though, Walsh? You just go back, on, like I know the answer, but the viewers don't know. Uh, uh, so, Prince, Central Club? Honestly, I've never done anything else. I, uh, I started unloading a beer truck at a pub in, in Bendigo called the Shamrock Hotel. Uh, in 1980, whatever, <laughs> um, and it just went on from there, you know. And I, you know, I finished. I went to William Anglis, um, you know, to uh, uh, to get a bit better understanding or to get an education. Or I'm not sure where I went. I spent a lot of time in the Golden Age Hotel. I can tell you that for a fact. Um, and I went from there to the Central Club to overseas to the Prince and, you know, the Prince was a bit like a travelling circus that didn't actually ever go anywhere. <laughs> um, but, you know, like that was a pretty big eight years, you know. Uh, and then, you know, we've been here now 11 and, um, you know, we just when I don't like it, it's much more fun than working for somebody else. Absolutely. So cheers to and you. And your name's on the door. And yes, and it is. And your name's on the door. Okay. Here's to the Commercial Club Hotel. Thanks Patrick Walsh, please, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, I've got an answer competition. So, uh, so, uh, uh, so a part of the Facebook thing, you know, uh, you know, as you know, we're just and if you well, you are just joining us for the first time, we're just like finding our feet here in the Facebook land. But we are doing a live show to bring people into pubs, and that's why you need to go to a local pub because that's where lots of things happen. So we had a competition that we're giving away a six pack of Young Henry's uh, New Towner. And uh, several great entries. It was one of those really carte blanche mm. kind of, you know, 25 words yep. or less. And do you know what I did? I actually counted every one of those. So <laughs> that's, that's how bad I was travelling today in my work office situation. But the winner. The winner. Is, um, drum roll. Oh, gosh. Drum roll, please, audience. I got nothing to drum roll. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Okay, I love to work on that. But the winner is going to Queensland. Brendan, you have won it because it's all Brendan, Brendan from Queensland. Well, you knew that in the like in the meeting no, that we had before. Surprise. Because Brendan's entry, twenty-five words or less, wanted to know how I was going to get a six-pack of Young Henry's to him in Queensland. And the joke's on you, Brendan. I have sucked in, Brendan. Now you have to, drink, have to drink delicious beer. Because we're going to send you the pubcast <laughs> because we've only got a budget of like 60 cents a month. That's about correct. And Maddie will define us how you could actually sponsor us and support us. But, Brendan, I'm going to send you in a tube post pack one can of Young Henry's for the next six weeks. <laughs> that's pretty good. That's postage is actually more than anyway. anyway. Details, details. Whoa, 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 hang on. You probably didn't admit to the, or didn't see the uh, fine print. Um, how do you reverse charge a phone call with postage? Oh, how do I make him pay for it? Oh. I'm sure there's a way, isn't there? Uh, yeah. If there's oh, a will, there's a way. That's a question without notice. I'd have to think about it. Anyway, that. everyone's a winner, and thank you for being in the podcast, uh, 25 yeah, and, words or less. And wonderful way for us to engage with you during the week. There's been lots of um, lovely messages on the podcast. Facebook page and coming up now. Oh, we have any messages there? Oh, someone's saying yay. Someone Serena. watching in Florida, so and, hello. Um, oh, that's yes, my mate, Nick. Yes, G'day, yes, Nick. he said hello, hello, Florida, and um, and yes, to everybody else who haven't, hasn't got the, um, the I can't, words in the. I'm mix. not going to read that one out because I haven't got my glasses. Earliest and a few swear pub words memory, in there, yes. Okay. Can you read well, that one? Earliest pub memory. Another one. Wangaratta sneaking into the bar in my jelly sandals and gingham shorts. There was no music. I left and waited for the podcast. Aww. Aww. I hope wow. you haven't been waiting for a really long time That's because jelly sandals time. are really out. And if, yeah, if you've been wearing like, them for that long, oh, they sweat. They are sweaty. Oh. Can I just ask, what is a jelly sandal? It's the clear plastic. They look yeah, like they're jelly. Plastic. They have glitter in them. I used to have clear ones with, I think, silver sparkles when I was six. We called them jelly babies jelly in babies. my day. In my day. They were very cute. <laughs> um, so what have we got coming up next? 
Well, we're up to last drinks, our third and final segment. Oh, that's right. Oh. And that's why I've got the whiteboard that's there, right. Karen. So thanks for that. Right. So you're going to move around. Oh, yeah. So costume issue, costume oh, issue here. Here we go. This is just so easy to manage. I just wanted to um, use Mention last week I said. Sorry, can I start again? Please welcome the third segment, the final of three. This is Last Drinks featuring Karen Ingram. Oh, thank you very much, everybody. That's fine. I don't need my own applause. It's a team show, that's all. I do, so please keep it. Um, well, actually, I do. <laughs> anyway, so last week I mentioned um, about different things that happened in pubs. I think um, Jason talked about, you know, you know, dates that had you know, happened in pubs. We all know. No, well, I didn't. You, 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 you mentioned that. I've never anyway, had a date in a pub no, at all. Well, not really. Really? Yeah. Anyway, um, but business ideas get hatched in, in pubs. Ideas to have a pub cost show can ha be hatched in the pub. But also, um, I think I mentioned about this philosophy talks in pubs and philanthropy talks in Ooh, pubs. Highbrow pub. and, um, Highbrow. Yeah, pubs. Yeah, and, yeah, 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 yeah. And um, one of the things I do in my time when I'm not on the pub cast show is I'm a marriage celebrant. And I have lots of I meetings. Did you know? Oh, oh, I know. You I must know ask that. me more about that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway. I'm a narcissist, sorry, it's all about um, me. Jeez. Actually, which is why it really means you just more cut that to out, Cut. You know, we have a, a postal vote going on and we should all be voting, sending off our votes if you haven't already. You have until Friday to request yes. a ballot form if you haven't received yours, yes, so, so get on it. We're, we're voting yes, but um, so that's kind of a bit I was going to say, yeah, yeah, about how I have meetings in pubs as well to, with um, couples who want to get married. So. Um, I look forward to the day when I'm having a meeting with a um, same-sex couple who wants to get married. So that's my plug for that. But there's also another exciting thing happening in a pub that's not band-related, but it's um, in the Darabin um, area in Northcote tomorrow night. It's north of Melbourne, if you're watching. It's called Transition in a Pub, and there's this movement sweeping across the world called repair cafes. That's where you go and take things that... You know, are broken is because we live in a throwaway society oh, and capitalism amazing. is just, you know, wrecking it for the rest of us. So, um, to push back against that, there are repair cafes where people, you know, who are good at fixing things and people with a lot of things that are broken, they all come together and work out ways to, to not chuck things into hard rubbish and, and the tip and whatnot. So, that's tomorrow night. I just want to give that from 7 30. Um, at Francesca's Bar in Northcote. So I thought that was something a bit different because now I'm trying to the very cool and groovy Maddie to give the gig guide. All right, so thank you everyone. Oh, the family's here. Thank right. you. I will point out in the interest of balance, a lot of my extremely large family are here. So that's why there is a lot of applause. All right, so here's a little bit of a rundown of what's going on over the weekend. Now, tomorrow, as I said, International g and Day. Go to a pub, get a g and don't get into a fight, just enjoy the GNT and the nice weather before it goes. All right, so on Friday evening, Beer Mash, which is a really, really cool beer bar in Collingwood, which I think has been around for it's maybe 12 yeah, months. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, their taps are being taken over by Epic Brewers, who are brewers from New Zealand, and the brewer will actually be there. So you can come and ask questions, and they will have a GNT on tap, which horrifies and what? fascinates me. You're there. What? I am there, I'm in there like swimwear. Mm -hmm. Uh, Bar Open have also launched a Cheap Pot Fridays. Can I get an amen? Because that's amazing. So from 2 o'clock... Hang on, be... just, you're going to be there at 3 o'clock. Most of us are working, so I'd, I'd like a dollar oh, pot at 3 o'clock. Not you know, if you're an artist. Mm. <laughs> okay, so so I think it's like it's $2 pots from 2 till 3, $3 pots from 3 till 4, something like that. Uh, but hang around because Charging Stallion are launching their fantastically named EP, the closest we'll ever get to a full-length album that night. Oh. And also the amazing, talented, stupidly cool Joyride is playing at North so North, I cannot speak, Northcote Social Club on Friday night. Saturday, uh, PBS Open Day, so go in, oh. have a look around, oh, yeah, 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 see what's yeah, going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Black Aces are playing at Last Chance Rock and Roll Bar, and it will be their last gig before they head to the UK, so I guess it's appropriate they're playing at Last Chance. Uh, Cosmic Kahuna have an album launch at the Tote. Uh, it's the Curtain Hotel Infinity of Birthday, uh, featuring Pearls and Dan. What is wrong with me? Too many gin and tonics. Uh, Dan Kelly's Dream Band. Not enough. Oh, you took my gag! Hey. You took my gag! Uh, now, on Sunday, our lovely friends, uh, Kodachroma, 
will be playing oh, at the post. Week. Who were our guests last week? If you didn't watch, go back and watch. Kate and Nat did the most fantastic job. And they covered a You're My Song and it was really good. But go back and watch it. Uh, so that's at the Post Office Hotel. Now the gig starts at 4.30. So get down early, have a bit of a Sunday sesh. Uh, the... Where am I? All right, so Spider Bait are playing on Sunday as part of the Yes Fest. Yes so Fest. there is a rally at the State Library at 1 and then a short march down to the Alexandra Gardens and then there'll be music. Spider Bait are headlining. Tim Campbell will be there. The Vaudeville Smash is going to be a really good time. And I imagine that like other states and territories will be doing the same thing. There's yeah. so Look out all for yes different party Yes parties and venues yeah. and all amazing, really, really cool things that are happening. Vote yes, support the vote, rally, protest, get out there, make your voice be heard. But I digress. Uh, and then again on Sunday, uh, is that Fen? Yeah, Fen Wilson. Fen Wilson, George Wilson and Ebony DeLima will be playing at the Evelyn Hotel. Really amazing young singers, get out, amazing yeah, voices. please support Let's them. do it. Now, I'll shut up because I've gone on way too long. Oh, no, you've but done very great. well. I think you wanted yeah, thanks to say very much. something. I do want to say please. something before I just uh, reintroduce Rob. Uh, Today in Melbourne, it was the AFL Women's National Draft, and Izzy Hamilton, who I've known since she was about 13, playing for South Melbourne Districts, and as you may or may not know, I'm an umpire. Yes. I've umpired uh, Izzy for South Melbourne and, and her school, St Michael's, and I've seen Izzy like this high, this high, this high, and I tipped it that, that she brilliant. would. I tipped it years ago, Did you before the AFL before Women's Competition. Was listening to you. <laughs> as I just said before, Karen interrupted me. Before the AFL Women's Competition came into. I said, if there was a women's competition nationally, she would go number one, and she's come number one, and she's been picked up by the Western Bulldogs. Your My mob. Team. So congratulations, Hi, Izzy Hamilton. Izzy Hamilton. Can't wait to see you on the ground at the night for the next season. Like just anywhere, just fantastic yeah, stuff. Yeah. Uh, but it, AFL, you should let Hannah play. You made a big mistake. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a thing. Bit sad about and, that. Uh, Very sad. If anyone's watching from the city of Yarra, like really oh. bad decision the other day, and we'll get back to that a bit later. But uh, anyway, oh, okay. we'll talk we're going to finish up on a high. We're going to finish with a massive high. We Rob Snarsky. Oh, thank yous. But yes, oh, yeah, we're going to do the thank yous. Do the thank yous. Sorry, Rob. We're just yeah. you know. It's a live show, Rob. We're learning. Um, okay, so we're just wanting to thank our beautiful live audience who came here today. Thank you. <laughs> And thanks to Maddie for her, her family to come to the <laughs> Thanks, our guys. Show. And uh, members of, the, of who aren't members, people who aren't members of Maddie's family are also welcome to come along to the podcast show. So you're welcome next week. Um, there next might be week. a passport check with the There may be a passport yeah. check. But I wanted to also um, thank behind the scenes. We couldn't do this without Kabi Wabi, the photographer to the stars, to our excellent um, production assistant, Mark Island, who is helping us. Our best boy. Our Tells best boy. Tells everyone to clap. Yes, and he's you know, got a great... Um, <laughs> and uh, and thank you, Jason Evans, and thank you, Maddie Thomas, and thank, thank me, you, Karen, Karen, Karen Ingram, um, and, yeah, Johnny Cash. and Johnny Cash. And Johnny Cash. And Johnny Cash. It's pretty it's special to be here. So, and you can may now. You can may. You can may now. Fantastic. We always like to finish with a cover here at the Pubcast Show. The reason why is because Australia's got a depth of great Australian music, and uh, the reason why. We've asked all our entertainers to come on here is because uh, you know Australian music is the way to go forward. It gives me great pleasure to welcome back to the Johnny Cash Room, Rob Snarsky from Black Eyed Susans, to do one of the greatest songs that ever came from the West. Robbie. Wow. 
Patrick and Patrick, round of applause Patrick, for Patrick and Patrick. Patrick. Thanks, Patrick. Mark Ireland, Rob Snarsky, oh, that's Rob Snarsky, Gabby Harvey, Patty Thompson, Karen Ingram, and Pete Jackson Evans. I'm not Rob Snarsky, I'm Jason Evans, but this is Rob Snarsky. Take us out. Rob Snarsky on Facebook.